Next, on this special edition of Currents News, the Bishop of Brooklyn, Nicholas DiMarzio, presented an ambitious plan to the Pope that will make a difference in many lives. The Bishop will also be here to discuss the death penalty and the Pope's major change to Catholic teaching. The Pontiff is traveling to Sicily this weekend and a young girl from Brooklyn could get the chance to sing for him. Plus, a huge surprise in Middle Village Queens basketball star LeBron James stops by a Catholic high school and brings a generous gift. The news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Fawbless. Welcome to this special edition of Currents News. A big headline for Brooklyn this week. Our shepherd, Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio, presented Pope Francis with an exciting new plan at the Vatican. The proposal accomplishes a lot. Religious dialogue, caring for the environment, and helping the poor. Melissa Butts reports from St. Peter's Square. The Diocese of Brooklyn, New York, made its way to Rome with Bishop Di Marzio, who presented with Buddhist leaders the interfaith projects they are working on throughout the country. Purpose. Bishop Nicholas Di Marzio came to the Eternal City to discuss the Green Affordable Housing Dialogue of Fraternity projects that Buddhists and Catholics are working on in Los Angeles, Chicago, and Brooklyn, New York. At the Vatican, the leaders from both religions met with the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, and the bishop met personally with Pope Francis. We came to present it to the Holy Father. It was the idea of Cardinal Turan before he died almost two years ago. He started working to see if we can in some way highlight Laudato Si, uh, to, because that was the environmental uh, encyclical, and he wanted to have green housing, housing that was environmentally sound, but this was directed towards the poor people. So we were accomplishing a lot of things with this, interreligious dialogue, uh, environmental work, and uh, also helping the poor. Three years ago, they all convened in the Vatican to discuss ways to strengthen interfaith connections in neighborhoods and communities, especially reaching out to children and the elderly. Thus, they put their ideas into practice as this project seeks to provide housing for low-income elderly persons and homeless populations. This is the, 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 a service project. There are three other legs of the table, we would say. There's dialogue, there's, there's prayer, and there's a study of theology together, different things. So this completes the table, so it's not going to fall. It's, it's pretty stable now with four pillars. He told the Pope about the project. They're working with Catholic Charities of Brooklyn and Queens and Mercy Housing in Chicago and have sites to build and plans to make every action eco-friendly and aligned with the encyclical Laudato Si. I think that this is a good start. I mean, if we've done something with the Buddhists, maybe we'll do something with the other religions uh, that is concrete, that uh, assists the dicastery in uh, fulfilling their mission to uh, make sure that the dialogue is continual. Uh, you know, you can talk so much, you need to do something at the same time. This is exactly what Bishop Di Marzio is doing by leading this project, incorporating religious dialogue, environmental work, and caring for the poor and elderly. Thus, after being inspired through their interreligious work and promoting Laudato Si, these leaders make their way home to continue their future goals all together. At the Vatican, Melissa Butts, Currents News. Back to you in New York, Liz. A young girl from the Brooklyn Diocese is hoping she will also meet with the Holy Father. Diana Marie Panetto is a choir member at Park Slope St. Savior Church and will be in Sicily at the same time as Pope Francis this weekend. She's praying for a chance to sing in front of the pontiff. Currents News' Tim Harfman reports. Diana Marie Panetto is flying to Sicily, where she could stage the performance of a lifetime and possibly sing for Pope Francis. It's surreal, really. I've always, my dream has always been wanting to sing for him, and now that I might be able to get that chance is just amazing. The Pope and Diana Marie will both be in Sicily this weekend. The Holy Father is going there to honor a crime-fighting priest assassinated by the Mafia 25 years ago. Later, he'll attend a youth event where Diana Marie is set to sing. The soloist is getting help from her cousin, a professional photographer who will be traveling with the pontiff. Since he's met Pope Francis and since he's a very close cousin to us, there might be a possibility where I would be able to go and meet Pope Francis through him. 
she's no stranger to performing for large crowds. <laughs> Diana Marie is a member of the choir at St. Savior Church in Park Slope and has performed at diocesan events throughout Brooklyn and Queens. I love singing. Singing is what built me to who I am today. I love singing for the church because I'm devoting my life to Christianity and I love that. It's just incredible. Uh, I've seen her grow uh, in the church and I've seen her grow as a young adult and we're very proud of her, of who she represents. And if this 14-year-old gets her moment with Pope Francis, she wants him to know she traveled over 4,500 miles for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I would definitely tell him that I represent the Diocese of Brooklyn and that I came to see him and that it was my dream to sing for him. And if I was able to sing for him, then that would just be amazing. In Gravesend, Brooklyn, Tim Harfman, Currents News. Oh, what a beautiful voice. I really hope she gets that shot. The pontiff's trip comes as the Catholic Church is dealing with a sex abuse crisis. The Holy Father is favoring silence as the best response. Currents News' Michelle Powers reports. As the Catholic Church continues to grapple with clerical sex abuse, Pope Francis says believers can look to Jesus' example, remaining silent in the face of opposition. Non è facile quello che ha fatto Gesù, ma c'è la dignità del cristiano che è ancorata nella forza di Dio, che non hanno buona volontà con le persone che cercano soltanto lo scandalo, che cercano soltanto la divisione, che cercano soltanto la distruzione, anche nelle famiglie. Silenzio. While the Pope was celebrating the closing mass of his trip to Ireland, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano called on Pope Francis to resign, accusing him of knowing about the sexual misconduct of Theodore McCarrick with adult seminarians years before the abuses became public. He also accused Francis of ignoring sanctions Pope Benedict had placed on then Cardinal McCarrick. All of these allegations remain unproven, and Vigano now says those sanctions were private, and neither Benedict nor he, in his role as U.S. Ambassador, were ever able to enforce them. On the day of the publication of Vigano's testimony, reporters questioned if the allegations were true. Attentamente, il comunicato e fate voi il vostro giudizio. Io non dirò una parola su questo. Delivering a homily at Casa Santa Marta in Vatican City, the Pope preferred to let the gospel do the talking. Dire la sua e poi tacere. Perché la verità è mite. La verità è silenziosa. La verità non è rumorosa. Michelle Powers, Current News. The Vatican is preparing so-called clarifications about accusations Pope Francis covered up the sexual misconduct of ex-Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. No word on when these clarifications might be released. There is new data out that shows a decline in reported incidents of sexual abuse by clergy nationwide. At the peak, during the period of 1970 to 74, the number of cases stood at 1,367. In the most recent time period, from 2015 to 17, the number of cases is 22. The information was compiled by the Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate. A story kept secret for decades about a Catholic church in Rome and Jewish refugees sheltered inside during the Holocaust. Cody Williams tells us more. The ancient Jewish community in Rome did not avoid the Nazi madness. Following a big raid in October 1943, many Jews were forced to live in hiding, some in churches like this one, St. Jochum, in the center of Rome. The parish priest at the time, Marco Antonio Dresino, hid three Jews in a nook of the roof for nine months. It was an episode that he kept secret until Father Ezio Marcelli decided to investigate it 40 years later. This story 
This story has been hidden for 40 years. Nobody knew. When I arrived in Rome, someone said, here we save Jews. Then I thought, I want to understand what happened here exactly. The Nazis entered churches and carried out many checks. To avoid being found, the Jews opted for an extreme measure, blocking the entrance. This way, nobody could enter or leave. To communicate with their families, they tied their messages to a thread and lowered them down through a hole in the roof of the church. To receive food, clothes, newspapers, they used this window through which even people could pass. Jewish refugees had a deep respect for Catholics. For this reason, one of them drew on the walls of their hiding place, the face of Christ crowned with thorns, the suffering of the three companions, and the sweetness of the virgin and child that offered the refugees tenderness and comfort during difficult times. This anguish is also reflected in this image of a man sitting with his hands covering his face. These tense moments were not lacking. For example, one day while the parish priest picked up one of his messages, a group of Nazis entered for a check. The priest threw himself to the ground as if he were praying, and the soldiers did not notice. In Rome, Cody Williams, Currents News. There's a lot more news headed your way on this special edition of Currents News. The FDA is calling it an epidemic among minors. The historic action the agency is taking to stop teens from smoking e-cigarettes. Plus, the Pope has made a major decree on a hot-button issue, the death penalty. Bishop of Brooklyn, Nicholas DiMarzio, tells us about the new Catholic teaching. And why do these high schoolers look shocked? The major surprise ahead of their new school year from a big basketball star. And do you have a story idea, something happening in your parish we should know about? We want to hear from you. Keep this email handy, news tips at thesalesmedia.org. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this special edition of Currents News. The FDA is calling it an epidemic, a rising number of teens who are using e-cigarettes. The Food and Drug Administration is stepping in, launching the largest enforcement action in the agency's history. Emily Schmidt reports. When it comes to e-cigarettes and youth, there's no smoke, but there is a growing firestorm. It's really addictive. The most recent National Youth Tobacco Survey finds one in five high school students uses tobacco, and by far, the most common method is with e-cigarettes. 2.1 million middle and high school users. The FDA has warned against the products for kids in social media campaigns. Vaping can deliver nicotine to your brain, reprogramming you to crave more and more. Don't get hacked. Wednesday, the agency magnified its message, sending five major e-cigarette manufacturers and more than 1,100 businesses warning letters, and in some cases, fines for selling to minors. Also warning about labeling and flavoring to attract or target kids, like e-liquid on the left, similar to candy on the right, all in an easy to hide size. Which is why I'm sure teens like it, because in school, they're just kind of everywhere. They could easily take a hit when no one's looking. Earlier this year, the FDA asked manufacturer Juul Labs to submit documents to understand why their products are so popular with youth. Juul Labs says in a statement Wednesday, appropriate flavors help adult smokers switch, while adding it will work with the FDA to keep e-cigarettes out of the hands of young people. The FDA gives Juul and other manufacturers 60 days to share plans to reduce youth sales or face possible criminal or civil action. In Washington, Emily Schmidt, Currents News. The final countdown is underway to a vital summit at the Vatican about the church and young people. Bishops from all over the world are convening in Rome next month. The focus will be on young people, faith and vocations. Preparations have been intense. Three Americans were selected to help get the conference ready. The Pope has made a bold change in Catholic teaching, saying the death penalty is inadmissible in all cases. This goes against previous doctrine that says capital punishment may be accepted if it was the only way to defend lies. Here to explain this new teaching is the Bishop of Brooklyn, Nicholas DiMarzio. He sits down with tablet editor Ed Wilkinson for this week's Into the Deep. Ed. Thank you, Liz. Recently, the Holy Father made some 
rather controversial statements about the death penalty. Maybe some people don't think so, but it seems that he changed the church's position on uh, the, the death penalty. And Bishop, has the Pope actually changed the church's position on the death penalty? I think he's brought it forward uh, from where it was under John Paul II, who said that the, the circumstances that the use of the death penalty, in his opinion, did not exist to be able to use it. Uh, and I think uh, Pope Francis said it's inadmissible. It doesn't, it doesn't, in the circumstances of today's world, we have a way of controlling uh, dangerous criminals that we didn't have perhaps in the past. This may not be the same in all countries, and that's why he's basically bringing it forward. It's kind of the development of doctrine, saying that really it would be best if we never use it. Mm -hmm. It's inadmissible as a way uh, that certainly uh, the moral law would see things. So uh, things do change over time. Our moral understanding of things have changed. As the more we understand, the more we understand the world in which we live, certain things can have a change. Some people are confused because they're saying that the Pope is saying this is a moral absolute, that it's, uh, it, it, it's wrong, intrinsically wrong in itself to he do that. He has not said that. That's okay. the difference, that because the, the, you know, taking the life of another is not intrinsically wrong, for example, in the case of self-defense. Mm -hmm. um, there will be Christians that say, no, I would never even defend myself, but that's the really ultimate uh, pushing uh, the, the acts of, 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 self, of, of life itself. So really, uh, it's not, it, it has not declared that. that this, it, like, for example, abortion in every and every circumstance would be wrong mm -hmm. uh, as an intentional abortion. You know, there's, there's spontaneous abortion, mm -hmm. so there's the difference. So uh, he hasn't said that. He's just moving the, the, the goal forward, saying, uh, this is inadmissible. Uh, people in the past said, well, John Paul, there were circumstances. He said he didn't see any circumstances where it could be used. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm a clearer than that. Mm -hmm. but this is another way of saying the same thing. It's inadmissible uh, because of the world that, the, in which we live. Uh, it, it'll be ch challenged always, but it's, it's trying, if we really uh, say life is invi inviolate, well, we have to be consistent. Yeah. What's your reading of the people in the pews on this issue? Do you think that people are generally against capital punishment? It, the survey's been done, and I wrote about it, that when people uh, are truly practicing Catholics, over time we saw in the last 20 years their opinion changed. They're more in thinking with the church that this is not a necessary thing. People who are not practicing Catholics, they go with their own instinct believing somehow that this is a, a deterrent uh, for a uh, crime, that people are afraid. Now, there have been articles showing that this, with the high people that uh, this is what happens in some cases. Well, it's hard to say, but uh, in general, I would say the research says two things. Catholics that are uh, adherent to the faith would have a better attitude towards it than those who are not practicing their faith and that they'd be free to decide which way they want to go. I mean, they, some of them would be for it, some be against it. At the same time, um, the use of the death penalty does not seem to be a major deterrent uh, for crime. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things about, uh, you know, being in prison or get, getting a sentence is that there's always should be room for some kind of rehabilitation. and we see the death penalty as more of a revenge-filled uh, solution. Well, uh, yes, yeah, certainly that's what it is. It's, it's a revenge uh, thing. This is a characteristic of the, our own country. Um, this is um, unfortunately part of it. There's no room for forgiveness. You know, in some countries, the maximum sentence is 40 years, and then you, even if you took a life, you, you would come out. This was the case with the murderer of, uh, of St. Maria Goretti. Mm -hmm. You know, 40 years. He was in prison, and he, w he came out, rehabilitated, became a gardener in a monastery, died a peaceful death, uh, sorry for what he had done, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, there's a different, different ways of looking at things. Good. Bishop, thanks so much for being with us today. And Liz, we're sending it back to you. All right. Thank you, Ed, and thank you, Bishop, as always. Great insight. Still to come on this special edition of Currents News, a Catholic high school gets a special surprise before the new year begins. A basketball star not only pays a visit, but brings a gift for the aspiring athletes. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to this special edition of Currents News. Basketball players at Christ the King High School in Queens received the surprise of their lives when one of their role models walked through the door of their gym. Currents News' Tim Harfin was there, and he tells us more. The Christ the King varsity basketball teams were curious why they were being called into the gym two months before their season starts. But then... All we heard was the mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> we turned around and he was right there and we ran and it was like LeBron. NBA star LeBron James walks into the school's gym, sharing the moment on social media. Don't get shy now. Don't, don't get shy. Don't get shy. <laughs> Yo, we out here, man. We out here. And the high school players had their phones out too. The visit is part of LeBron's sponsorship with Nike. For over a decade, the company and NBA star have partnered with Christ the King, which is known for its prestigious basketball programs, including multiple diocesan, city, and state championships in recent years. But this was LeBron's first trip to the Queens Catholic School. He also invited players to check out the locker rooms, renovated by Nike, an area Christ the King hasn't fully upgraded in decades. The rooms are equipped with nearly 900 lockers, inspirational quotes, and a display with LeBron sneakers. And the star's latest shoe is named after the high school, which he also released on social media. Yo, what's up, y'all? At noon, man, New York stand up. I got a surprise for y'all. On the sneakers app, we got these. LeBron 3, Christ the King, only colorway. Oh, yeah, I got mine on. The special shoe features the school's maroon, white, and gold colors, along with its lion logo. Players appreciate the new gear. I think it gives us a little bit more motivation to play even better than we already intend to play. But team members say what is most important is what LeBron had to say, that someday they'll be in his shoes. It was very inspirational because he was talking about how He's our role model, so we have to be role models to the people coming up after us, you know, younger girls and boys. It gives the kids a different perspective on being an athlete. You know, it makes them realize that you have to, be, you have to do more if you're in a position of prominence to be able to help the next generation succeed. In Middle Village, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News. That had to be such an incredible experience. And as for those special Christ the King sneakers, only a limited number were released to the public and they sold out within minutes. Though their retail price is about $200, they're selling online for as much as $1,800. Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of Currents News. I'm Liz Faublis. Set your DVR to record this program so that you never miss it because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.